well, there's so much going on in space flight, so that we have to do two space news episodes this week. So it first appeared as if the FAA approval for this week's 200 meter hopping tests would be delayed again. But breaking news, now apparently we finally do have the FAA approval, but there's also bad news. Elon Starship presentation has been delayed to mid-September. On a positive note, however, both Starship prototypes are coming along nicely, and even parts of Super Heavy can already be seen in Coco. So we have two startups that want to land unmanned probes on the moon by 2021. One chose SpaceX to bring them to the moon. They have chosen wisely. The other one chose the United Launch Alliance to bring them to the moon. They chose poorly. And then everyone was talking about Elon's idea to nuke Mars, but then apparently again he changed his mind. So would nuking Mars actually work for terraforming Mars or not? Let's find out. After a lot of back and forth in the last weeks, with the Starhopper's 200 meter hopping test being delayed multiple times because the FAA would not give out an approval in time, it now appears that we finally do have that damn FAA approval we've all been waiting for. Of course, just to annoy Sebastian and me, it was given out in the weekend, so that we have to now reshoot some scenes because we honestly didn't think that we would have the approval by today. So we can keep the tinfoil hat in the closet for now. No, 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 not this time. New Cameron County road closure dates indicate that the hopping tests are now scheduled to begin early today on the 26th, with alternative days on the 27th and the 28th. But Elon's Starship presentation unfortunately has been delayed as he recently indicated in a tweet. So our Elon time dilation formula seems to be more accurate than we would have liked. So while we are all now eagerly waiting for the 200 meter high Starhopper hopping test to take place today or on the next two days, we can at least distract ourselves a bit by marveling at the continuing rapid pace with which the Mark 1 and Mark 2 Starship prototypes are being assembled in Boca Chica, Texas and Cocoa, Florida. Over two weeks ago the tank dome end caps were already installed at the Boca Chica site as shown by Elon on Twitter. And work on the interior of both Starship prototypes is progressing simultaneously. And even the first parts of the Super Heavy booster already lie around in Cocoa, Florida. This is really amazing as the Starship is of course only complete with its giant Super Heavy booster. In other news we have an interesting Japanese company called iSpace which has been already founded back in 2010 which has the goal of building a sustainable infrastructure to help colonizing the moon. They want to land an unmanned probe on the moon in 2021 called Vegeta Sama. Okay, just kidding, it's called Hakuto, but Vegeta Sama, you have to admit, would have been a cool name. And then they want to land an unmanned probe and a rover in 2023. And every year successive ever more complex missions afterwards to slowly start helping to build up a moon infrastructure. Now interestingly, both missions will be launched as secondary payloads on Falcon 9 rockets. Another goal of Hakuto will be to learn how to utilize water ice at the lunar south pole, which will be of course very important for later settlement. And they have quite some ambitious goals we have to say. Their vision for 2040 is a base on the moon or better a colony on the lunar south pole with up to thousand people. And we sure do hope that they will succeed in making this or in helping to make this happen. And we actually have to say that their choice for the company and the rockets which will bring them to the moon was very smart. They have chosen wisely. Then by contrast we have the American company called Astrobotic that also wants to land an unmanned lander on the moon in 2021. They were selected by NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services program to deliver 14 payloads to the moon on its Peregrine Lunar Lander in July 2021. With this $79.5 million CLPS reward, Astrobotic has now secured 28 payloads for lunar delivery as part of its first mission. Don't forget, however, these payloads cannot be heavy, since the lander is quite small, and on top, they won't be carried to the moon by a Falcon 9 or a Falcon Heavy. Why not? Because this time, NASA's involved, and therefore, there's politics involved. 
So who will carry the Peregrine Lander to the moon? Yes, the ULA, a collaboration of Boeing and Lockheed. You know, the guys that have been working on SLS and Orion for more than 10 years now do the same tests over and over again and still are far from finished. The rocket on which the Peregrine Lander will start will be a Vulcan rocket. Sounds cool, Vulcan and all. Live long and prosper. Ah, oh, forget it. However, the rocket only has one small problem. It doesn't even exist yet. So basically, they could have chosen the SpaceX rockets that are flight proven, that have launched many times into space, are reusable and far cheaper than ULA system. Or they of course could go for ULA, which is more expensive and uses a rocket that doesn't even exist yet. Yeah, we are sure that this decision was not dictated by politics at all. And this was a 100% free market logical choice. Hmm. But of course, this contract was awarded by NASA. And NASA decided who would launch them to the moon, probably. And we all know the ties of NASA and Lockheed and Boeing, right? So NASA or Congress or whoever is behind this decision, you chose poorly. So now to Elon's tweet that everyone was talking about last week. Nuke Mars. We have to say, despite being total Elon fanboys and girls, we didn't really like that idea. Okay, sure, we admit it sounds really cool. The basic idea is to melt Mars polar caps with gigantic hydrogen bomb explosions. The polar caps consist of carbon dioxide and water ice, which would then be set free in gaseous form and would therefore increase the atmospheric pressure of Mars. Mars atmosphere consists mainly of carbon dioxide, but the pressure is very low, a bit below 1% of the atmospheric pressure on Earth at sea level. So by releasing the CO2 and water vapor of the polar caps, Elon's plan would make the atmosphere of Mars much denser, therefore increasing the greenhouse effect, warming up Mars' atmosphere. Then CO2 trapped in Mars' soil would be released, warming up the planet even more. But the problem with this plan is that current research indicates that the amount of carbon dioxide on Mars is not enough. Even if all CO2 on Mars would be released into the atmosphere, the pressure would still only be 7% of Earth's atmosphere. According to a 2018 paper published in Nature Astronomy, but for a runaway greenhouse effect, we would need at least 10%. Also, there's the slight, you know, quite minuscule problem that the amount of nuclear arsenal needed to completely melt the polar caps of Mars and to induce this greenhouse effect would be around 180,000 50 megaton bombs, so 180,000 Tsar type hydrogen bombs, which is a lot more than the nuclear arsenal of the whole planet, let alone the problem of actually getting all those nukes to Mars, you know, because we would need 180,000 rockets strong enough to actually bring those nukes to Mars. And you can, of course, find the link to the calculation how to arrive at this 180,000 number in the description. So we suppose that Elon realized this also and then backrodered a bit. So now he proposes that a better idea would be to place giant mirrors in space which would reflect the sunlight and bundle the sunlight towards the poles, thereby using the heat of the sun to melt the polar caps. Uh, that would be certainly technologically much more feasible than the 180,000 hydrogen bombs, that's for sure. But the question still remains if there actually is enough CO2 on Mars to create a runaway greenhouse effect. And then we shouldn't forget that Mars doesn't have a magnetic field anymore. Therefore, the solar wind constantly strips away the atmosphere. So a thick CO2 atmosphere would have to be constantly replenished, else it would thin out over time again. Oh yeah, and then there's also the radiation problem, you know, from created from the solar wind and from cosmic high energy cosmic particles. Oh, and then there's also actually the very negative effect of low G, low gravity environments on the human body. So is it then game over for our dream to colonize and then later on terraform Mars? Oh, we think there are some interesting solutions to be able to overcome every single one of these mentioned problems. And we're going to talk about these solutions in the second part, which we're going to release on Wednesday. So do you think that we're too skeptical about Elon's new Mars plan? It's weird that we don't agree with Elon this time, right? Mm -hmm. But of course, we always want to be honest with you, so sometimes it happens that we disagree with Elon. Not often, admittedly, but it can happen. 
And in part 2, which we'll release on Wednesday, we'll talk about a more realistic colonization and terraforming approach in our opinion. So if you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and also turn on the bell, such that you won't miss that episode. See you soon! See you!